ebook Moral Equivalent by Chris Navelle. Produced in the Strange Galaxy Science Fiction, January 1957. Why shouldn't a culture mimic another right down to last little detail? Because the last little detail may be just that, the final one. The planet Linux 2 dwindled to the human luminous speck. In a clear space now, a break-off point. Bakarov held the ship in position while Kelly set dolls to the jump into the hyperspectral drift, opening when deep spacemen knew as a slot. Bakarov cracked his bony knuckles nervously. Now, Johnny, he said, easy this time, real easy, gentle her into it. She's not a new ship. She re- resent, resents being slammed into the slot. She'll take it, Kelly said, a boy's grin of almost suicidal abandon. Maybe she will, but how about us? You sort of cease, crease the slot, getting at us, offering a A little closer, Anne. I'm still getting the touch. You ought to be glad I'm an intuitive uh, astrologer. I get, he set the last dial with a rapid twelve and reached for the kiss-off switch. You've done, you've done out two decimal points, said Bakarov. Who worried about such trifles? Enough to annihilate, ionize us. I know, I know, Kelly grumbled, adjusting to the dial. Joel, I'm just touching it for luck. Here we go. He pressed the kiss-off switch. Bakarov shut off his eyes as the ship lurched slot ward, wishing that the coin... The management government inspection college graduate at astrologer was still a bull. Ken had been an expert in the job. But then three pence back, he'd suddenly gone over after a native stem door. And Michael H. Cleaver, screaming that no dirty alien would ever marry his daughter. Ken had no daughter. Currently, he was confined to Alabroff, awaiting transformation, transformation, earth side, to a padded little homey, homey room. In a spaceman snug pulp. How about that, Kelly? asked proudly. Once the ship had locked into hyperspace, the superior intelligence and still nerves do the trick every time. Poor devil climbed back her off the side. A paranoid Kelly Dinos. Did he ever tell you about the plot to keep him out of the Lunum miniature Academy? He never talked to me much. That's because you're a cold, distant, unsophisticated type, Kelly said with compliment. Complacent. Smile, me told everything. You applied to Luna every year, studied all the textbooks of military organization, land tactics, sea tactics, space spaces, tragedy histories of the warfare, crammed his cabin with the junk. Knew it almost out, inside out. Fantastic memory. Why didn't he get in? Hemophobia. He couldn't pass the physical. He thought the, they were plotting against him. Still ungrateful for this chance of a little aspiration, with a barest hint of a grin. So he said, I don't understand it's possible to bring the ship sideways for the slot at Tara. Please don't try, said Benoff, big, shuddering. I knew we could we should have weight of cranes, please don't Rolala. We should be still there with a cargo colourish to any sour. Afraid it would be sour anyhow, but I've said the warrior's knack of finding trouble. But there is the slowest loading port this side of the rift. I must admit, however, oh, they didn't do badly this time. Notice that, did you? Kelly asked. Hmm, did you find a way of speeding them up? Sure, gave them curls, old doggy books. They're crazy about books. Really hustle for them. But enough. They said nothing for several seconds. Then his long, shallow face become pale. You what? Gave them the books. Don't worry, Kelly said quickly. Cal gave me them to me before they hauled them away. You gave them the warfare books to the people on Marla? You mean I shouldn't have? Why not? That's what's wrong with Marla. Plenty better off grinning. Grimly did some quick figuring. It'll be here, their time. We can't get back, Kelly. Take us out of hyperspace now. Kelly, guys, hit here at once. But we might come in. We might come out of the side of a star or... That, Berloff, said his voice filled with wretchedness, simply cannot be helped. We must return at once, Amala. Captain Drake, commander of the forces of Empress Wera, 
The Gold Star Miner sat in his desk at Supreme Command Post, which had recently become converted from a higher ward cell. He engaged in a fiery argument over the telephone with Nob, the, the Emperor's right hand man. But damn it all, General Rack shouted. I must have it. I'm the Supreme Commander General of all armies, Dick shaped his ship. Doesn't he mean anything? Not under the circumstances, Nob answered. Two soldiers standing aside the guard in General's quarters listened interestedly. Thinking of getting it? One asked. Not a chance, the other answered. Drake glared at them in, in silence, then returned to the argument. Will you please attempt to understand my position, he said hoarsely. You put me in a command at my orders, the almost other decrees, is it? We have against the allied decrements, and all the other corners be me. Me, correct? You've got a point, one soldier said. You've got a point, one soldier said. you never get it, the other replied. Shut out, you two, Drake roared. No, aren't I right? It's earthly way, Nob. Authority must be recognised. I'm sorry, Nob said. Extremely sorry. Personally, I sympathise you, but the Book of Turin rank equivalence is quite specific. Seven shoulder stars are the most, the absolute most, that any general can wear. I actually cannot allow you to wear eight. But you gave Severe Ferric seven. He's not. He's just unit general. That was before we understood the rules completely. You thought we had no limit to the number of stars we give him. In fact, it was sulky. I say, general, you, could, you have to be satisfied with seven. Take one away from Felix, then. Can't. He resigned. In that case, I resign. You aren't allowed to. The book, military, leadership, sufficiently states a supreme commander he resigns during hostilities. An earthman would find that very fault inconceivable. All right, Jack Ferris, he slammed down the telephone. Two soldiers of strange winks. Attention, you two, Drax said. You're supposed to be the honour guards. Why can't you act like honour guards? We haven't got weapons, one of the soldiers pointed out. Can't be helped. I sent them what we had to the front. Don't we need them here? The soldier said earnestly. Not bad. It's bad for morale, us not having weapons. And morale is vital for victory. Drax hated to be lectured, but he had to accept textbook truth when he's quoted to him. You may be right, he agreed. I'll try to get some back. You have his eyes entirely. Everything had happened so quickly. Just a week ago, Nob had walked into his stores and inquired, Drack, how would you like to be a general? I don't know, Drack said, had uh, confessed honestly. What is it, and why do we need one? Well, starting Nob said, you heard of war, haven't you? Ideas, I have ideal, very earthly. I'll explain later how it works. What do you say? All right. Do you really think I'm the right type? Oh, absolutely. Besides, your hardware there is perfectly situated as a pre command post. Aside from the location of his hardware store, Jack had other qualifications for leadership. The one thing, he looked like an earth general. He had a large, he loomed large in his eyes. Jack was over six foot tall, strongly built, certainly muscled. His eyes were grey, deep set and fierce. His nose was aquiline. His mouth was firm, because he usually held nails. In it, when he was about out on a repair job. In his uniform, Drack looked very ancient and general. As a matter of fact, he looked like several generals, for his cap came from the Earth Mars War, 82. His tunic was a relic of the General Campaign. He belt was the star of the Third Empire. His pants were replica of the Southern Star Front, where his shoes reminded one of the hectic days of Finn's early rebellion. But least of all his clothes, the soldiers' clothes, his honour guard had to piece out of their uniforms, personal articles. He complained bitterly about the injustice of this, and came close to deserting. But Drack, over some hasty reading in Snogget's leadership, told them about the terrain document, doctrine, the privilege of rank. In front of him now was a pulp from Ally Battlefront. He wasn't sure what it said, since it was coded. He neglected right down the code. It, it was it, it was it enemy repulsed us with heavy losses or should it read US repulsed enemy with heavy losses he wished he knew it made quite a difference the door burst open and a young corporal rushed in hey general look take a look at the window Drake started to rise and reconsidered rules are rules hey what he commanded forget that forget forgot the colonel said hey sir take a look at the current windows uh, much better Drake walked out to the window and saw in the distance a mass ascending black smoke. City Shano, Commander Corporal said proudly. Boy, we smacked it today. 
Sanitation bombing for ten minutes. Ten hours. You can't use it for anything but rabble pit now. Fur, Drac demanded. Sir, the planes are filled up and waiting. What shall we fight on next, uh, sir? Let me see, General Drax, it's so in the wall map. Upon the important enemy cities of the Circle of Red, there were Alice and Drain, Kellis and Gamos, Dredd and Drake. Could possibly think of no reason for leveling one other than the, more the other. After a moment's thought, he pushed a button on the desk. Yeah, asked the voice from the loudspeaker. Which one, it if? Yes, of course, said the crackle voice on his old rear door assistant. Fellow of the owner's money, won't pay up. Fancy it. Drake turned to the corporal. Go to it, soldier. Yes, sir. Corporal hurried out. General Drake hurried, turned back to the reports of his desk, turning again to the puzzle out. What had happened to Ally Repulsive US or US Repulse? How should it read? Oh, well, Drake said repressively. I'm a long run. I don't suppose it really makes much difference. Miles away in the man's, no man's land, to the bunker where he fills concrete and steel. Within the bunker there were two men. They sat on the opposite sides of a plain wooden table. Their faces were stern and impassive. Beside each man was a pad and pencil. Each pen were marks. Upon the table, upon, between them was a coin. Your toss, said the man on the, to the right. The, right, the, man, the man on the left picked up the coin. Call it heads. It comes out heads. Damn said the flipper, passing the coin across the table and standing up. The old man smiled faintly, but said nothing. Kirk reached for the kiss-off switch, then hesitated. Look, Igor, he said, do we have to come out now without charts? It gets risky, you know. How can you we tell what's out there in normal space? There's risk we have to take, Belarus, said Stoli. But why? What's wrong with the people bother having those books? Believe me, there's nothing burnt in them. Not Belarus, said patiently. You know that Marla is a semi-restricted planet. The limited trading is allowed under general control conditions. No one else was allowed to the planet except those approved list. Yeah, Kelly said vaguely. Said he sort of wrong. The law, Marla, is a mirror culture. They consider Earth and its ways to be absolute perfection. They cover everything on Earth as they, they, they can find. Seems like a good idea. We have got a real good culture. Sure, but we have developed into it. But they then simply copy what they see. They don't want any traditional rationale. Since they don't know why they're doing any particular thing, they're easy to misinterpret, warp it into something harmful. They learn, Kelly said. Of course they will. But in the meantime, the results are devastating. They always are when a depressive race tries to ape the culture of more advanced people. Look at what happened to the South Sea Islanders. You bet that was worse than French, British... African and Amer- American culture. You see how they see what uh, any more South Sea Islanders do you? Same with American Indians, with the Tots and plenty others. I still think you're making too much of a fuss about it, Kelly said. All right, I'll give you them a lot of books of warfare, political and organization. So what? What in blazes can they do with them? Have they learned better, said Grimley? They never had a war. Kelly gulped. Never? Never. A completely corruptive society we were, or, or were, when they started reading those warfare books. They wouldn't start a war just because they've got some books on it. And know that other people do it. And yeah, I guess they would. Quickly put the doll, oh, set dolls. You're right, buddy. We have an absolute moral obligation to turn and straighten out that, that mess. I knew you'd see it my way, but it was approvingly, said approvingly. And here, there is an additional fact that the Galactic Council could hold us responsible for any deaths traceable to the book. It would mean random wretch prison for a hundred years or so. Why did you say that in the first place? Kelly flipped the switch, get us the switch. Ship came to the normal space. Fortunately, there was no sun up on it in its path. Hang on, Kelly said. We're going where we're going, going in a big, great big rush. I just hope we're in a time to savage something, Bailoff said. Watching at their freighters ploughed in the way through the sea of space towards the unchanging stars. If evident, nervousness, Nob walked down a long, dull corridor towards the imperial chambers, carrying a small package in both hands. Prime Minister Dictatorship was a small, bald man with a great bulging forehead and small, glittering black eyes. Made smaller by sail rimmed spectacles. 
He looked the very incontinent of an evil genius, which was why he had been chosen as a power behind the throne. But the fact, however, Nob was a mild and near-sighted, well-meaning little man, a lawyer by occupation, known throughout Marla for his prized rose gardens, his collection of earth stamps, in spite of his temperament, handicap, he didn't find his new job too difficult. The earth books were there and not simply interpreting them. Literally impossible. Whenever a problem came up, Nob thought, how would they solve it on earth? They could do the same, as near the same as possible. But dealing with the impressed cons- presented problems with unique nature, Nob couldn't find a book, told a way the means, perpetuating royalty. If such a book were attainable, Nob would have paid at any price for it. He took a deep breath, not and opened the door to the royal chambers. Instantly ducked. A violent shadow across the wall to behind him. Not so good, he thought, calculating the distance by which it had missed him. Impressor's aim was improving. Nob, the deity, you dirty swine in Empress Street. At your service, Majesty, Nob answered, bowing low. Where are the pearls, you insolent drought? Here, yeah, Majesty, Nob said, handing over the package. It sprained... The check of buying them for you. The master of the treasury threatened to desert to the enemy. He still may. He may still. Peoples are muttering about his severance in high places. The pearls are yours, Majesty. Of course, Jester opened the package and looked at the lustrous gems. Can I help keep them? She asked in a very small voice. Of course not. I don't think so, Jester said sadly. And she she had just had been just been just another Malayan girl. It had been chosen empress, the basis of her looks, were were heartbreaking lovely. It's only aphrodite that an empress should be heartbreaking lovely. The aliens have seen enough Earth films to know that. But empress could also be cold, cuddly, and cruel, as well as gracious, headstrong, and grace, generous to fault. She could, she should care nothing of her people. While simulated all she cared for was her people. She should act in a manner cuddly to make her subjects love, in spite of, of and because of herself. Chessa was a girl of considerable intelligence. She wanted to be as earthly as the next. The contradictions in her role baffled her. Can't I keep them for just a little while, she pleaded, holding a single pearl out for the light. It isn't possible, Nob said. We need guns, tanks, planes. Therefore, they sell your jewellery. You're the men, there are many Pedarian participants. And why did I have to insist upon the pearls in the first place, Chessa? Chessa asked. I was playing as print Empress. You must be, you might be flighty, mispossess a whim of iron, must not know, uh, must have no regard for anybody else's feelings, must lust for expensive bubbles. All right, Jessa said. All right, what? All right, swine. That's better, Nob said. You're learning, Jessa. You really are. You could just frustrate your moods more constantly. I will try, I will, really will try, promised the Empress. I learn, Nob. You're proud of me yet. Good. Now that we have some problems of the state, which we must decide upon. Prisoners of the world, for one thing. There's several possible means for disposing them. First we could. You take care of it. Now, now, Mr. Child, Lord chided. Mustn't shirk from your priority. I'm not. I'm simply being observatory and dictatorial. She's ill solve it, pig. And bring me diamonds. Yes, excellently. Nod said, bowing low. Diamonds? But the people. I love the people. But to hell to them. Them, she cried, firing her eyes. Fine, fine, Nob said, and bowed his way out of the room. Jessa stood for a few moments in the fault, then she picked up a vase and shut it on the floor. She made a mental note to order several dozen more. Then she slung, it upon, slung herself upon the royal couch and began to weep bitterly. She was quite a young empress, and she had the feeling of being in beyond, in being beyond her death. Depth. The problems of war and variety were completely ended her social life. She resented it. Any girl would. All right. Nob, meanwhile, left the palace and went home in his car, armoured car. Car being ordered to protect him against assassins. Who couldn't it have looks? Books aimed a good deal. Were their plots at the prime ministers. Nob could see no reason for this being he was a prime minister. Any one of the thousand men could do the job with equal efficiency. But he supposed it had a certain symbolic meaning. He reached his house, his home. His wife kissed him on the cheek. I don't, Paris, dear. 
she asked, quite hard. Not said. Lots of work for after supper. For after supper, it isn't. It just isn't fair," complained his wife. She's a plump, pleasant little woman person. She worried continually about the, her husband's health. It shouldn't make you work so hard. But of course they should," said Nob, a little astonished. Don't you remember what I told you? All the books say that during the war, Prime Minister's harried, harassed individual, way down when all his burden of state and evil relaxed, tense with the numerous strains of high office. It isn't fair," said his wife. His wife repeated. No one said it was, but extremely un- extremely earthlike. His wife shrugged her shoulders. Well, of course it is earthlike. It must be right. Come eat supper, dear. After eating, Nob attached his mounds of mounds of paperwork. Attached his mounds of paperwork, but as soon as he yawned, his eyes burned. He turned to his wife, who was just finishing the dishes. My oh dear, she said, do you suppose you could help me? It is it is it proper? she asked. Oh absolutely. Book states that the Prime Minister's wife tries to in every way possible to leave her husband at the burden of power. In case I'm happy to try. He sat down in front of a great pile of papers. But dear, I don't know anything about these matters. Well, I in instinct, Nob answers, yawning. That's what I do. Frightened by the importance of her task, she set to work with a wheel. So I went later to waken her husband, who was slumbering on the couch. I've got them finished except these, he said. In this one, I'm afraid I don't send a word. Nob glanced at the paper. Oh, propaganda. That means giving the people the facts, whether true or false. Very important in any war. I don't know. I don't see why. It's obvious. So, during a flight style war, you need ideological differences. That's why we chose the dictatorship. On the other continent, we chose democracy. The job of propaganda is to keep us different. I see, she said dubiously. Well, this other paper is from General Higgin of security. He asked what you were doing about the spy situation. He says it's very serious. I've forgotten about that. He's right. It's reached a crisis point. He put the paper in his pocket. I'm going to take care of that personally, first thing in the morning. The last few hours, his wife had made no less than eight major policy decisions, 20 codifications, eight unifications, three clarifications. Nob didn't bother to read them over. He trusted his wife, good judgment and common sense. He went to bed that night, feeling for a job well done. Before he slept, fell asleep, he figured out exactly what he would do about a side situation. Next morning, Nod's orders went out by all means of communication. Results of Crafferty Swift. Since the people of the dictatorship were completely behind the wall, and truthfully loved and hated their empress, in, in whose name the order was signed. A typical scene took place in a cup car of Charlie and El- 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 Express, the occupants of the car, 20 feet communicating, communicating, Businessmen sealed the doors as soon as they received Nob's order. Best read among them a salesman, the name of Fang, was elected spokesman for the group. Boy, he said Fang, I guess I don't have to tell you anything about the importance of this order. We all know what, what this war is by now, don't we? We sure do. War is hell. A war of the enemy thrust upon us. A war to start all wars. That's right, Fang said. I guess we've all felt the pinch since the war started. Oh, boys, I've done my part, said the man. They Dexel, the Prime Minister called for cigarette shortage. I don't have twenty co- car loads of tobacco and a river. Now we've got smoke cigarette rationing. That's the spirit, Fang said. I know for a fact that others among you have done, done the same. Sugar, canned goods, butter, meat and hundred items. Everything rationed now. Everybody feels a hinge. But boy, is still more that we have to do. Now the spy situation has come up and it calls for quick action have we done enough? Groaned a clothing store manager, owner. There were enough in a time of war. Her people still give give till it hurts. Then give some more. They know not to sacrifice is too much. If nothing counts but a proper prosecution of war. The clothing office, store officer nodded vehemently. If it's earthly, it's good enough for me. So what can we do about this spy situation? It is for us to decide here and now, Frank said. According to my minister, 
dictatorship could not boast a single act of espionage, sabotage done to since the beginning of the war. The chief of security is alarmed. His job is to keep all spies under surveillance. Since there are none, the department has lost all morale, which in turn affects the other departments. Do we really need spies? They serve a vital purpose, Fang explained. All the books agree on this. Spies keep a country alert on its toes, event, event, eventually, eternally vigilant. Through sabotage, they cut down on arms production, which otherwise would grow so large since it was priority over everything else. Their supply security for subjects for in- interrogation, confusion, brainwashing, re-documentation. This in turn supplies data for the enemy propaganda machine, which in turn supplies material for counter propaganda t- machine. Drax looked forward. I don't know. It was so complicated. That's the beauty of the Earth War, Fang said. Suspenders yet to like little compl- complications. Completely interrelated. It leaves out one extremely important detail. The whole structure collapses. Those Terrans, Dexter said, shaking his head in the narration. How are now to work, boys? I'm calling for volunteers. Who would be, would be a spy? No one responds. Really now, said Frank? There's no matter to the cake. Come on. Some of you must be harboring trees of treacherous faults. Don't be ashamed of it. Remember, it takes all kinds to make a war. The head a zipper. Southern from Yorga, Yorga Exkirth, did his folk. I have a cousin who's a minister of war for the Allies. Accepted a selection motive for subversion, things cried. I rather thought it was, the vicar salesman said. Please. Yes, I believe I can handle the job. Splendid, Fang said. I then train and ride at station. The doors are unsealed, allowing the communities to leave for their jobs. Fang watched the vicar salesman depart and hurried into the crowd. In a moment, he got, found a tall man wearing a slouch and dark glasses. On his lapel was a silver badge, which read Secret Police. See that man, Fangs asked, pointed of Silver Selman. You bet, the Secret Policeman said. He's a spy, a dirty spy. Quick, after him. We're being watched, said the Secret Policeman, lengthily. I, I just wanted to make sure, Fangs said, and started to walk off. He felt a heavy hand on his shoulder. He turned, the Secret Policeman then joined by two tall men in soiled hats and deep dark glasses. They wore badges that said stormtroopers. You're under arrest, said the secret policeman. Why? What have I done? Not a thing, as far as we know, the stormtrooper. Not a single solid thing. That's why we're arresting you. A military set police powers, the secret policeman explained. The adventure search warrants and habeas corpus invasion privacy. War, you know, you know. Come along quietly, sir. You have, to, you have a special, very important part to play in the war of it. What's that? You have a military selected as martyr, said the secret postman. Said the secret postman. Head high, head high. Fang marched proudly to his destiny. A whole mother took the to war with a wheel. Soon, books began to appear on the stores. War and you and the masses. erotic. Release a war for the elite. The inherent will to destroy the, the for philosophers, the war of civilization of scholars, volumes of personal experiences so well. Among them was a camp of a daring sabotage by a former zipper salesman, a drastic story to martyrdom of Fang. Raw eliminated a thousand old intrusions, and burdened the people with the heavy hand of tradition. War demonstrated uh, clearly everything was temporary as a match flash set. Art, a man, because cities, buildings, parks, vehicles, the hills, museums, monuments, were as whispers of the dust of the bombs had gone. Among the pers- public threat, early opinion was voiced by Zen, who was recorded in saying a war poet party plant party, Well, there ain't nothing in the stores I can't buy, but I never made so much money in my life. There were universities, professors bound up on a subject in order to fit themselves. The chairs of war was sure to be endowed. All they had to do was wait until the recent crop of war. Properties were taxed into becoming becoming philanthropists or driven to it by a sense of guilt. The books were sure they would feel. Armies grew, soldiers learned to paint, salute, curse, appropriate home cooking, play poker, fit themselves into every war for, for the post, fit, fit themselves in every way 
for the post-war civilian life that broadened themselves and the travel and got a welcoming vocation from time and the heath. Well, the millions agreed was certainly one of the cleverest first institutions, very educational, and it was entertaining. <laughs> nope, Berkhoff was saying, you wouldn't like winning Hoka to prison. Not one little bit. It's on Mercury, you know. In the twilight zone, you bluster by day, you freed by night. Only two men have escaped from Rashe in the last hundred years, and one of them figured his curve wrong and flipped into soul. What about the other one? Cuddy asked, despairing lightly. His gyros fused. He had bound straight for the coal sack. Took Kegum a couple of thousand years to get there at his speed, but it finish. Dreamily. No, Johnny, you won't like Ran and Hashi. Okay, okay, Kelly said. Definitely would be better. They give the only they give that only as a measure of extreme clemency, Belagov said with gloomy salafic satisfaction. Enough, it was all we were seeing that Mayana, there was a note more more hope that conviction, Kelly's voice. That she lies off there she lies off to starboard. Melena was a sp- tiny Blue and brown spear, sunny growing larger in its screens, a rain of bled and made the channel. Kelly was sworn, that's a Gaelic patrol boat for Nadaloff. What's he doing here? Brockley said Bradaloff. Staying in practice of recording the planet at war. We shouldn't touch down legally until the wars are cleared over. Nuts were going down, Kelly touched the controls and afraid to begin to ascend to the indicted area. Change and freighter, the radio blasted. This is an indicted ship moth. He too identify yourself, Bakov answered promptly in probably in language. Don't see him then scramble that, he said. To Kelly, they continued his descent. But while a voice in the patrol boat said in Petonium attention, Freighter, you're entering an indicated area. He too at once are prepared to be boarded. I, don't, I can't understand your vile North Perrain as an accent Bakov bellowed in this broad South Pavilion dialect. If you people can speak a man's language, don't clutter up the, the either with your ridiculous chatter. I know you long haul trampers. I'll be d- darned if you give you your any air, thought of food, or anything else. You can't stop that stuff like any normal decent. This area is indicated. The patrol bro- broke in, speaking now with a broad South Pennsylvania accent. Hell, but I have grumbled. They got themselves a lovely little list under direct orders from the patrol boat moth. He too at once, freighter, and prepared to be boarded and inspected. But if glanced at the planet lodging loom beneath him, he gestured to the power control Kelly and said, Hello, hello, do you read me? Your message is not coming across. Do you read me? Stop or fire. But if nodded. Kelly kicked in all the jets and they plummeted towards the surface. With his pilot six cents, Kelly changed course abruptly. Blast seed and sealed past them, sealing a double tube for good. They were there they were in the atmosphere. Travelling too fast, a whole glowing red with friction. A heavy, bravery cruiser built only for spiritual renewing. Broke off it. Pursuit curve. All right, Fraser. It means you're not your license. You're gonna leave sometime. But I've shut up off the radio. Kelly fired the banking jets again to spiral in for the landing. And as they circled, Bellef saw the shattered rumble and ruin where Chitty's had been. He saw highways filled with modern military commons. As there's at this edge of the throat behind your eyes and three military planes ringing their way to fresh target. What a mess, he said. Kelly nodded grumbly. They touched down and opened the branches. Already a crowd of millennials had gathered. A few artists had got set up their easels and were busy painting on the freighter. Not before it was lovely, because it was lovely, because it was terrain, which was much better. A Merlin stepped forward, grinning. Well, he asked, what do you think of it? Of course, a war. A war, of course. You must have noticed. Oh, yes, we've noticed, Bradoff said. 
real intercontinental war, complete with individual differences, man said, uh, state proudly. Just like the civilized planets here. Though you must admit, it's Earth like. It's easily Earth like, Kay said. Now take us to whoever is in charge, quick. Conference with Zotnob, the Imperial Palace began well. The Prime Minister was overjoyed that real Earth men come to witness the war. He knew very well that, by Earth standards, it was a pretty small war. Beginners' war, really. But they were trying some day with some more know how, better equipment, you'd be able to produce a war that would match anyone's. We have hampered, we were hampered for the start, Nob apologised. What, well, not knowing how to produce atomic fusion? That must have been confining. Kay said, and Balagoff wince. It bioaminate the nectricidity and just doesn't have the same grandeur and finality. The scale of animation seems insignificant, but you have to come with me, gentlemen. I have something here which will may interest you. Not much of the Earthmen ahead of him. They could copy their loose jointed rolling walk. Here, he said, darting ahead and opening the door. Behold, the Earthmen stood upon an ivory pestle, a small model of an atomic bomb. We proudly, we worked until we mastered it at last, and Lop said proudly. You are of any luck, we'll be perfection within a month. I use them in a year. Now I think I can safely say Marla has come to age. Rather said, no, no what? No atom bombs? Is Earth like to use atom bomb, atomic bombs? Why? This war was to end at once, Kelly said. You're joking, processing Nob, looking intently at Earthmen. But he saw at once they were not deadly serious. He grinned and sat down. Nob was feared with moral demur. The face was the moral dilemma of fearful perpetrations. One hand, war was a typical terrain and institution, an extremely important one, an institution clearly worthy of emulation by the people of Marla. On the other hand, this terrain and intuition was being refuted, retained, denied, in fact, by two typical terrains. The problem was insoluble for him, and Nob remembered that while in all causes, the hand was a moment of supreme authority to, to keep it, step in. We must discuss this with the Empress, he said. He led them to Justice Corridors, not to open the door. Half a dozen vases shattered around them. Are you these pigs, Jesser Shield? You not have brought the diamonds? Sir, so I knew I forgot something. Forget them? How dare you show your face, Jesser Snap? A fizzles for a pleasant. Who are you? I'm a good mind to lock them up, especially the grinning red-headed ape. Grady's grin became a trifle strained. They are Earthmen, Your Majesty, Nob said. Genuine Earthman. Really, Breed Lesher? Really, said Nob. Oh, golly, Justice, Justice said, losing, our, losing all our painfully required imperial pose beyond becoming a frightened, but little, lovely little girl. Young girl. Your Majesty better began. Just call me Jessa. My gosh, real Earthman. I knew I'd meet a real Earthman before. Never met a real Earthman before. I wish you'd let me know in advance my hair. You're beautiful, just like yourself, Kelly said. I'm so glad I think your hair is beautiful too. Kelly turned red, brick red. You're not supposed to say that, you know. I don't know, Jessa said. I just, I'm willing to learn, but what should they have? Excuse me, Badworth broke in sourly. Your Majesty, we have to ask you to stop the war. You don't mean it, Jessa turned bewilderedly to Kelly. Have to do it, honey, Kelly said softly. Your folks are just aren't ready for war yet. Just as eyes flashed, she began to regain a little of her pure pose. But of course we are. Look at what we've done. We go over to all battlefields. Look at our cities. Terrigrate on polit referees. Find everything's been done in strict accordance with the rules. We're as ready for war as anyone. I'm oh, sorry, you have to stop it, Becker said. Cully nodded and uh, nodded his agreement. Jessa gave nod, nod, a beseeching look. But the Prime Minister but his eyes. The lemma was there again. Enormous insurmountable. A squarely addressed the surface. The start of the war now would be on Earth like. Refuse the Earth Man was unthinkable. I just don't know, Jessica said. She looked at Kelly, who wore the guilty expression of a man caught murdering a fawn. It burst into tears and collapsed on the crouch. Nob and the Earth Man looked at each other, made several helpless gestures and left. Now what? Badass asked in the corridor. Do you think she'll stop the war? Nob shrugged his shoulders. Who knows? 
it's a problem without a, without a solution. But she has to make up make her mind up her mind. Okay, he said that's one of the duties of authority. The Empress is aware of that, and you will make up her mind. Though it would take a year or more, unless she falls completely under the strain. Poor kid, Kelly said. She needs a man to help her out. Indeed, she does. Nob said hast- read hastily. A strong man, a wise man, a man who guide her as a visor, husband to her. Could he blink, then laugh nervously? Don't look at me. I mean, she's a cool girl. Kid, nice girl. Makes a man a wonderful wife. i not the marrying kind. He said, you know what I mean. Johnny, said Barbara, I'd like to have a serious talk with you. Nod. Nob led them to the vacant room, and they le- left it cheaply. I don't know how, I won't do it, Kelly declared bluntly. You have to, Bellera said. You got us into this. You got to marry us out. No. You make a beautiful, wonderful wife, Bellera thought, quoted Kelly's words back to him. So, so pretty but spirited. What more would you ask? Could you ask? Freedom of choice, Kelly said grimly. That's for Asselson speaking. She'll never be able to make up her mind to stop the war unless you marry her. Until the war ends, that intricate ship is going to ship sit in Albany, waiting for us. You're you have nothing. You have anything to lose? But I've answered, I haven't. Not a thing in the big galaxy. Your freighter is always waiting. That's right. That's true. Kelly admitted. Ten minutes later. <coughs> But if I dragged him into the corridor, they were joined by Nob and ushered back and back to the Empress Coat Changers. It's okay by me, it's okay by you, kid. Kelly blunted out in a tone that made Bellera shudder. I mean, Nob smile and outright what hero wrote ship. What is it? What is all right? Jessus asked. Marriage, Kelly said. What do you say? Jessus studied his face for several seconds. But do you really love me? Give me time, kid. Give it time. Jessus must have seen some of his expression. Some of behind embarrassment and anger. Very soft, he said. I will be most happy to marry you. It was a double ring summary and effectively tear in. By the produced the Bible from the seminary freighter, ancient words of the turf summary were read. When it's over, Kelly, grinning, perspiring nervously, rubbed his hands together, turned to the British bride. Now stop the war, honey. Yes, sir, Jessica said dreadfully. She heaved a great sigh. What's wrong, Kelly asked. I'm just choked. Ter- just tremble to think of our city being bombed as this is no, and us not able to do anything but because we're going to stop fighting what are you talking about if we stop fighting they won't she said why should they it's our flight to continue conquering if we quit fighting there'd be nothing to stop them from conquering us completely no Kelly shouted here you go what can we do about this no I said that's what we appear to be our only one solution I can arrange a meeting for you to be turned to Belleroth, the lever at the present of allies. What would I say to him, said Belleroth. To her, Nob corrected. You can say, I suppose, the same sort of thing your friend said. Belleroth actually white, stared her back right away. Kelly caught him in one meaty fist. OK, Mr. Fitzer, the blood is plain. Marry us out of trouble. But I've not got a girlfriend in Misk. she has got a new years ago. Stop squirming around. What does he look like? Buttergrove prayed in admiration. Very pretty, Nub said. During the double wing seventy, Buttergrove appeared at his bride with cautious approval. Lavoya was indeed a pretty girl. She seemed to possess the million virtues of obedience, patience, and fire. As soon as the final words were spoken, the war was declared officially over. Peace and authentic earth custom was proclaimed. Now the real work begins, Bellaroff said. First we need a list of casualties. For the what? Not asked? Casualties. I'm not sure I understand, said the Prime Minister. Casualties, the number of people killed in warfare. Now wait a minute, Nob said. His voice trembling. Do I understand you correctly? You're trying to tell me that civilised people kill people in their wars? Do you mean... They, they, they leave people in the city to bomb. Kelly looked at Belloff. Belloff looked at Kelly. Lord, Lord, muttered Kelly. Belloff merely gulped. It is possible, said Ars not. Do you say like really? Of course not, said Belloff. Never, Kelly said. Nob pursed his lips. I have been waiting to ask a real authority, a genuine earthman, some questions of the subject. Our texts are by no means complete, and some parts 
Don't complain at all. Like the matter of determining victories. There's something we couldn't figure out. We decided you must use a complete system of empires. There's too much for us. We built a bunker in no man's land, put a man from each side in it. They tossed coins to determine whether the turn it is. Was many a side would burn and the enemy said me after the outprints had been evacuated, of course. Of course, said Begloff. It worked out rather well with the coins, Rob said. Not as average, in fact. So I'm your system, said the gully. Just the way we do it, Bugloff added. A few more questions, if you please, Rob said. Jessica, will you bring in the big war of Psychopedia? Jessica and Lavi had been gossiping on the other side of the room. I hurried to return with a great book. Now here, Nob said, opening the volume. It seems to imply... Wait, Bella broke in. He took the book from Nob's hand and flipped through rapidly and turned on Cully. Whispery, he said, in pantopodium. It looks as though Cain blotted out all references to Cully. Sure, exclaimed Cully, brightening. I told you we were in the hypophiliac. A bleeder. And actually have cut out every single mention of bloodshed. Yes, point... Nub began later, Bergelov said. Right now, we'd like to get a few articles from, from your all from our spaceship. He winked at Kelly, winked back. It would take a moment, and we were only too happy to. Oh dear, said Nub. You mean you wanted a spaceship? What? Well, I assumed you will have no further use of it. Well, it was hard to find nowadays. It seemed any proper direct, you were a statue to both of you. I Men have brought the Institute of Peace to Marla. Did I do something wrong? Not at all. Not at all, Kelly said. Oh, not at all. Perfectly delighted. Not at. Johnny said Bellaroff. Sorry, Kelly apologized. A broken man. The bride stopped to step forward to claim their husbands. Prayers and prosperity came to Marla and the left death guidance of their military leaders. In time, spaceships arrived and departed, but neither main men showed their particular side a bold one for, the, for their wives. Do so patient, let fiery p- Provide, proved more appealing than lovely far reaches of space. But I've sometimes pondered the opportune wilting down of their freighter. He'd never been able to discover who had signed the order. All manners knew the saying, and the earthman is easy to catch but hard to hold. He wondered whether he had been the true reason behind the order to scrap the ship. By well, this time, of course, he didn't really care. His wife for Kelly being responsible, he was all the more reason to feel appreciated. If his wife or Kelly had been responsible, it's all the more reason to be feel appreciated. Nod knew the answer, but he had other things on his mind. He lay awake, restless. His wife looked worriedly at what was wrong. I've been wondering, he said. There's war books that the Earthmen had turned at us had us turn in. I never had uh, did understand why all the detent deletions were made. You know, the ones that made us figure out a way of deciding which was side one. The Earthman said they used the same one, same vegetable. She you remind him? Well, they wouldn't lie, would they? They would if it was good for our good. As what is known as democracy, the statementship of politics in interchangeable terms. He looked impressed. Oh, and I tried to question the crews of the ship that landed here. The question answers are so evasive, I can't help thinking. Yes, dear, she prompted. Civilized people actually kill each other in wars. She turned a stocking shot face toward him. How can you think such a thing? Who would be the advi- to the advantage? Advantage? He repeated. The expression cleared and he fell back to his pillow, completely relaxed. I hadn't thought of that, dear. None of, not, not, none of, of course. It'd really be too much, wouldn't it? No question of it, dear, she said. Now that's settled. Can you go to, now that's settled. Can you go to sleep? And no answer. He's already snoring peacefully. <laughs>